So I peeps another day, another cheeky little component video for you beautiful people out there. What we're looking at is electronic load cells. Shear beam is the most common we've got in our factory, but there are many different types. Saying that, they all work the same principle, schematics, and the way of testing is just the same, just different applications. And here you can see the junction box with all four going back and one signal going out to the PLC or your receiver. Now this is the one I'm gonna be showing and how to test it in its natural environment. And as you can see, here's its junction box. This is a six wire, the last one was a four wire. We'll go through that in a bit. So let's get down to the magic of how they work. So they work with one component and a circuit, component being a strain gauge and the circuit being a weak stone bridge. And we'll go through that. So what is a strain gauge? It's a component which is made up from a very thin foil grid of a constant tan of aluminium, which is sandwiched between two layers of foil to protect it from the elements. And the foil grid is designed in such a way that when a strain is applied to it, it stretches or it compresses, leading to the change in resistance value. These output can changes can be so small that we have to, that's why we have to put it into a Wheatstone bridge circuit. So the basics of a Wheatstone bridge I'll go into, but if anybody wants me to do a more detailed video, I can do, but that'll be a whole video. But the basics of it, the Wheatstone bridge circuit converts the resistance change into a voltage change, and this amplifiers makes the voltage change usable. So this is handy so when you're using sensors or components which give out a very small change in resistance, such as a strain gauge or a PT100, the voltage can be converted into a voltage difference that can be read a lot easier. They can be all wired up in loads of different configurations. The first one being a quarter bridge, this one being a full strain gauge bridge, and this one is the most accurate, and as you can see up here. So we've got the schematic of the full bridge and where they'd actually be situated on the shear beam to give a more accurate readout, and it takes out of any variances like heat, because heat could actually um, distort a strain gauge and give out a wrong reading. So let's get down to the nitty gritty, how they're wired in and the schematics. Now this is a six core cable, the one we've got, and the, two, the difference with this is it's got sense cables. These two cables, the input and output, this senses any voltage difference across the bridge and then that gets PLC to rectify that. So these six wires can be chopped. So we've got the cable here itself. So as you can see the cores here, we've got the blue and black as our inputs, the white and red is our outputs, and the gray and green is the um, sense. And then you've got the shield cable. So there we've got the four core, and this is actually no different. You've got your inputs and your outputs. This one can't be cut because it uses the resistant value of the actual cable itself. Where the six core, you can cut it because it monitors that voltage drop. So let's get down to there the juicy bit, the testing. Testing a load cell, it's actually really easy. There's two main tests. You want to disconnect it and take it away from wherever it's testing and you want to get your calibration sheet. So the first one, we're going to do a zero test and a sensitivity test. Now, I ain't got the two kilogram weight, but I'm going to put a little bit of force on it for you and show you. And what we want to see is the values that the um, calibration sheet shows. So what we're going to do is put a 10 volt or what the supply voltage is across the inputs and then we're going to be testing for a millivolt output. So I've got my input coming in on my blue and black, and then I've got my crocodile clips on the white and red. And as you can see, I'm just putting that on the old schematic. I do get juicy about a schematic. Oof. Look at them sausage fingers go. I'm almost quivering with it. So what we're gonna do first is a zero test. So here, what we wanna be seeing is the millivolt output of when it's actually got no load on it at all to make sure it's to the calibration sheet. So what you can see is I've raised it from the workbench. Now I've got my leads going out to the output. And as you can see, zero volts. And that's what it calibrated at. So then what I'm gonna do is just apply a little bit of pressure. What you would wanna do is put a known value weight on there that the calibration sheet has shown, and then you wanna get it to what it actually is on the actual sheet itself. But you can see the millivolts going up and down as I apply a little bit of pressure. I know about pressure, I'm a married man. <laughs> so as you can see, these are coming in pretty much bang on, if I had a normal weight that is, and we're all good. So the second one is really easy again. What we wanna do is with it off the machine and disconnected, we wanna check our input resistance and our output resistance. So with the meter on ohms, all we're gonna be doing is checking the resistance, but we wanna be within about one or two ohms plus or minus. I believe it's two ohms. Yeah, two ohms plus or minus of what the calibration sheet's showing. And we're pretty much good on this one. And then just do the same again on your output. Crocodile clips across your plus or minus. 
and again two ohms and if this all comes back sweet you know you've got a good load so you you got to track back your fault back to the plc but then if you, if you've got any kind of throwing off you know it's your load cell now if you beautiful people out there have enjoyed seeing that little sausage finger and you haven't been bored to death you're all ledged approved